What's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the essence of the orange and teal look, why it's used and when you should or shouldn't use it. So there's a ton of videos that go into great detail behind the science of the orange and teal look, and I'll link some of my favorites in the description below. But in this video, I'm gonna be talking about an aspect that I think is rarely talked about, but is actually super crucial in creating this look, or any look for that matter. So you'll see this look in a lot of major films. It comes in an infinite number of styles and variations, so it's clearly popular, it definitely works, but why does it work? Essentially, it comes down to complementary colors. So complementary colors are opposite ends of the spectrum on the color wheel, and they make each other stand out. They make each other look better. And the complementary colors, orange and teal, are very commonly found in film because we almost always have people in frame. And regardless of your complexion or ethnicity, almost all skin tones are gonna fall on this very narrow sliver of the color wheel. And opposite of that section of the color wheel is teal. So naturally, teal complements our skins. And that orange and teal combination can be found in lots of natural settings as well, such as a sun setting on an ocean or a bright blue sky in the middle of fall. So again, naturally, it just makes sense. So if that's the case, why isn't it used all the time? And why should or shouldn't you be using it? And for that answer, I'm gonna point you to some of Wes Anderson's work. Well, we made ours with a special rabbit ear on the top so we could pipe in some music. His films take the use of color and storytelling to the absolute next level. But he's not constantly using the same color palette. And why? because he doesn't want to. Color is such a subjective element in filmmaking and storytelling. So if the look doesn't fit your story, don't use it. Even though there's a natural science behind why our eyes favor the orange and teal look, it's certainly not the only way to go. Now, another reason I mentioned Wes Anderson is because I'm not sure there's another director that takes as much time and consideration into handpicking exactly what colors and what objects fill each frame of every scene of his movies. And that's a very important factor in pulling off any look based on any color palette. You should always have in mind what's filling your frame. This comes down to wardrobe, makeup, set design, lighting, colors are everything. And controlling your color palette is a very practical way to building a more professional look. So in my case, I wouldn't quite have the same orange and teal contrast in this image if my light behind me was set to orange. And yes, I did just do that from my phone. I'm using the Aperture MC, which is a super handy little light. It's pretty affordable, so I'll also link that in the description below. But yeah, so maybe you can use lighting to dial in your look. So as I mentioned before, there's a billion ways to pull off this look, especially when grading. To demonstrate, I'm gonna pull a couple clips from ArtGrid. Uh, the first method I'm gonna go over is a very simple way. It may fit your needs if you're a beginner. I'm gonna be doing it in Premiere, so it's easy to follow. And then we're gonna take a little more time and go over the more professional technique, and I'm gonna be doing that in Resolve. Again, there's a billion ways to do it. We're just gonna go over a couple real quick. So our first step, as with any image, is to do color correction. In this case, we're gonna add some contrast, maybe bring out the shadows, as well as the highlights and then bring the black point down. And that looks pretty good right there. So now that we've done our primary correction, let's go ahead and start building the look. In this case, it's gonna require pulling a key and we're gonna do that in our HSL secondary. So we're gonna check our red qualifier and then let's click this to highlight our selection. And we'll modify it here. We don't wanna to get too broad and start qualifying things we don't need, but we do wanna make sure that most of the skin is covered, maybe except for the shadows. And then we can bring the luminance up slightly and then feather this out some. Same thing with our saturation. That looks okay, but as I mentioned, that noise is really gonna be a killer in creating this look here in Premiere. So let's see how much we can clean this up. We bring the denoising up as well as the blur. And we can pull this blur all the way up here and it does kind of get rid of the noise we were seeing, but let's see how it holds up whenever we start working on the grade. So now that we have our skin selected, we're gonna invert the selection and that's gonna qualify all of our neutral tones. And then we'll click these three dots here, which will give us our shadows, midtones, and highlights wheels. And let's start pulling our midtones towards blue teal. And the same thing with our highlights. And now let's check this and see what we're looking at. And we can see it holds up pretty well. And now if we wanted to go through and make more refinements to our skin, what I would recommend doing is taking your Lumetri color and then stacking a new effect on top of it. And the lowest one in your effects controls is gonna be the one that populates over in the Lumetri color tab. Now let's hop into our curves and go into our hue versus sat and hue versus hue. And here we're gonna do a little bit of work on our skin tones. So let's increase our orange and red saturation. And then let's make sure that the skin is sitting where it should by changing the hue. Right here looks pretty good, but it did make the red gloves more magenta and I don't like that. So we're gonna set another point here and then pull this point down some. And now I think we're looking pretty good. And we can also use our hue versus hue to make sure that any blues are sitting more towards teal, as well as pull up the saturation in our blue tones. 
So that's looking pretty good. If we look at our before and after, I think we've come a long way and we've definitely given this that teal orange look. So now let's hop into Resolve for our more professional method. All right, so now that we're in Resolve, let me walk you through this node tree that I've built out ahead of time. First, we obviously have noise reduction. Then we have contrast. I usually like to add a balancing node if I need to do any color correction, but in this case, it wasn't very necessary. And then we have a layer mixer where we split up our blues and our highlights, which go sequentially. I just have them stacked for organization. And then we have our skin node, which is actually layered on top of these two. Next, we move on to a look adjustment where we do start modifying the image as a whole. Then we have the exposure adjustment and then we have the vignette. And then down here, these two nodes are optional. I wanted to clean up the whites and the highlights. So I use these to do that and I'll show you how in just a minute. Then of course we have sharpen and grain. So starting off, we'll go ahead and add our noise reduction because it is gonna help us get a cleaner key. And this is the benefit of using the full version of Resolve versus the free version. Uh, we're gonna take our frame, set that to three, Luma and Chroma around 6.1. We're gonna unlink our spatial threshold and send the Chroma to about eight. And now we'll start adding our contrast. I'm gonna pull this up. Main thing I wanna do is just be sure that we're not clipping anywhere. And right about here looks good. Let's move our pivot around. And I'm liking that. Now we can clearly see that the white balance is pretty dialed in because this waveform here appears white. Whereas if it was too cool or too warm, you know, we see one channel layered over the other one. So one thing I do wanna do is be sure that our highlights and our shadows are sitting okay. And I wanna pull down on the highlights, make sure that they're within that range we have. We can pull our gain up. And then let's go ahead and go into our log wheels and pull the bottom part of those shadows down. And that's looking good. Now we'll go ahead and make a qualification for our skin. Instead of pulling my own key, I'm gonna go into our color and then presets. And we're gonna choose six vector red. We'll highlight this node to see what we're working with and we'll expand the width and then move this center point around. And if you notice the key is kind of struggling and that's because we didn't create enough separation in our saturation. So we're gonna go back into our contrast node and bring the saturation up enough to create some separation. And 87 looks good to me. Now if we jump back into the skin node, our qualification is already looking better. So from here, we'll just further refine this. And I think that looks pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and bring the denoising up to around eight. And we'll even add some blur. Now we'll disable the highlight. And you can see nothing's really changed because all we've done is qualified it. But now we'll take our blues and we'll go into our primary wheels and we'll start pulling our mid-tones towards teal. And it's really just that easy. We're already pushing this image into that orange teal space. All we've done is taken the neutral tones and pushed them towards teal. So yes, this looks good, but let's get really fancy with it and let's start making some more changes. Let's go into our gain and we'll pull this more towards teal, maybe a little more towards blue. And then in our highlights, we can see we've really pushed that too far and we wanna go ahead and neutralize those tones in the higher range. So we're gonna go into our log wheels to do that and then take our high range, pull it up some because we only want to affect those highest parts, then these specular highlights here. And we're going to pull that in the opposite direction. So you can see we're really starting to balance those out. Now it doesn't have to be perfect here because we're going to use another technique in a second to further refine those highlights. Now let's go into our skin node. And just to help sell the look a little bit more, we're going to go into our output and change the output gain to about 0.75. Now, as you see, that kind of doled her out, but we're going to go into our primaries and we're going to add some orange in the gamma. And that's pretty good, but to refine it even more, back into our log wheels, we'll push a little bit of red into the shadows, maybe a little red in the midtones, and then a little bit of teal in the highlights, just so it kind of puts her in the same world as the environment she's in. Now that's looking pretty good. Now typically you wanna really take your time and make sure that your qualification is clean because we can kind of see if we zoom in, this is starting to fall apart in their cheeks areas and the shadows of her hair. And then back here, we kind of have these blobs of orange, which isn't automatically just the worst thing in the world, but you do want to make sure it's not causing your look to fall apart. So now we'll go into our look adjustments and we'll start working with our primary wheels to adjust the image as a whole versus just working with our skin or the blues in the background. So our gain, we're going to pull this again towards teal, gamma, maybe towards orange or red, and then the lift, maybe just slightly towards teal. Now on our exposure adjustment, we can pull our gain down and our gamma up. And this is all kind of just to taste. So now on the cleanup and life node here, I'm gonna show you a couple really cool tricks. So I wanna pull the color boost down and this is gonna primarily affect the less saturated parts of the image. So pull this down and you can see how it's really cleaning everything up. And then we'll also take our gain and we'll pull it down. And then we'll go into the primary bars and take just the white bar here and pull this up. It's gonna bring our overall exposure back to where it was. And then in our life, we'll take our saturation and we'll pull this back up. And then we can hop into our curves and go into our hue versus sat. And let's set a preset for yellow and then a preset for blue. 
that will pull up a little bit in our teal, as well as our orange and red. And now let's take a look at what these two nodes have done. So again, this is very subtle, but it really helps bring a lot of pop to the image, and it's totally up to you whether or not you want to implement this. Now I can see that her skin's looking a little bit yellow, so we're gonna go back to the skin node here and go into our primary wheels, and in our gamma, we'll pull it just a little more towards red. Maybe even use some of the lift here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, and if we disable that skin node, <laughs> everything just looks dead. So lastly, once we have a look we're happy with, we'll just go into our sharpen node, pull this down to 0.47, and then our grain, you can add whatever you want to. I'm just gonna add my favorite, which is 35 millimeter 400T. We'll pull up the size just slightly, and then maybe pull up the strength if we want to. I really like this look, but again, as I've mentioned throughout the entire video, it all comes down to what your story is asking for. If this look doesn't help tell your story, don't use it. But if your story does call for it, now you know the right way to implement it. Now I wanna encourage you to take this information and get out there and shoot something. Take some of these tips and techniques you've just learned and then go out there and apply it. So that's it for me guys. Friendly reminder to work harder, do more, and start now. This is a story of a first teacher. Avoided all the stories with slanderous wings, but it's all done well.